Welcome to the heartland of Jesus Name Pentecost, the Louisiana District of the United Pentecostal Church Tape Ministry. Tapes may be obtained from Lighting Tape Ministry, P.O. Box 248, Tioga, Louisiana, 71477. May you be blessed by this ministry to the glory of God. I was suspended between heaven and earth. All of it hinges on that. What was before, what was after, and what will be at the hereafter. And thank God I shall know him by those nail prints, the crucified Lord, who will become the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It all hung in Calvary. It all hung on him. Oh, but what a wonderful thrill to know who we are <laughs> and to know who he is. And we're not alone. And even he and all his greatness is not alone. Because the Bible repeatedly, every time you read that word host, remember what Brother Tree said. It don't mean a host. We don't know what that means. That means armies. That speaks more to me. Even in his greatness, he is not alone. There are armies of heavenly beings, angels, and they are sent to minister to us and to bring in the kingdom. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. We just got to sing all hail. supernatural realm that is beyond us, one working in us, one beyond us working for us. And then if God be for us, who can be against us? Woo! I feel like I'm just about the biggest one of them angels right now. The teacher shout. But it's school time. Sit down. Get out your commitment sheet. I want to give you one little thing, and then I'm going right into this, and I'm going to very briefly do my lesson. But don't worry about it. If I don't complete enough of it for us to feel like it is complete, I've done this lesson one other time, and we will substitute the tape so you'll get the whole business. Will that be okay? Tell you what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to go home and digest this stuff anyway. You're going to have to listen to this several times. Share it with your pastor. He's going to be excited too. This is, y'all are smart to get teaching like this. That's all I can say. I want you to write down the commitment 
uh, May 23rd. I think I told you that, but May 21, 22, and 23, I want to see how many of you will fast and pray. And this is why I've added this today. There is a bringing down and a change in the nation's government where I'm going next in, in, in the 1st of May. You heard what Brother Tree said. There's war over that area. And I want us to pray. God, God doesn't need our prayers, but he only acts on earthly affairs as we ask him. He intervenes at our request. I want you to promise after hearing this, I want you to stand. You're going to make a commitment and then write it down. Three days of fasting and prayer that the forces of evil will be driven back and God will miraculously send the enlightenment and salvation to the leaders of that nation. Can I get some commitments? If you can't do it, don't stand. But I need you. I'm going to be walking in the lion's mouth over there. But God is going to help us. God is going to help us. The others of you, write it down. If the Lord moves on you, well, then do it. I believe in that. I believe in that, Brother Therese. I believe in that. They're fighting. And they're going to be met with a host of angels because we're going to ask God to intervene over there. Over here is the Bulgarian uh, display, and there's a video that's running on it. You will hear the voice of my interpreter. It's a, it's a video of the city and what goes on there. may be interesting to you. Be sure you order the videos. These would be wonderful to go back and share with the women that did not get to come. So the tapes are available now. You can get them before you leave. And I suggest that this section, from here over, when we dismiss for lunch, you go to the tapes and books then, while these go to get their drinks. Then while these are eating, then you can, they can switch. You know, I can't ever figure out how to taste. Y'all know what to do? Okay. And into my lesson. Uh, by the way, the, the, the children's Bible that we have purchased so many thousand of are over there. When you pick it up, you know that for every one you pick up, there will be 10 to 20 people read one of those when that goes into Bulgaria. It's awesome. So in the Word. Okay, I am talking to you today, and this follows perfect sequence with what we have already heard. The purpose of the church, the purpose of God in the earth, it is clearly enunciated. I will have to be very abbreviated because we have to get out of here in time for lunch to stay on our schedule for this afternoon. So I'm going to hit it very quickly, and uh, you just have to grab what you can. But we, what we've heard today even, and what I'm about to tell you, is a proof that we need to rid ourselves of small thinking. It is not your 40 in your church, or even your 400 in your church. You are in a kingdom enterprise. A worldwide nation affecting enterprise that will extend into eternity. It is big stuff. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Look bigger than what you have seen. Ephesians 1, 1 through 14, 3, 11 through 20 explains partly the, the breadth and the height and the wonder of it all. And Ephesians 5 tells you how to go into war, but you can't go into war until you know what these two men have already said and understand the width and the breadth and the power involved and all the help. So don't try to go warring till you get an understanding of what it's all about. And that requires big thinking. It is not you and three women that pray and you're all alone. You're connected by the Spirit to millions of people who are praying the same prayers. So see things in a bigger light. God did not bring us to this hour to have us defeated. He has matched us for this hour if we will latch on to it. He has fitted us for fulfillment. He doesn't prophesy things in his word and they're not going to happen. He has fitted us for fulfillment of everything that's in the book. And if we fail, it is our fault. It is not the spirit. It is our fleshly thinking. By the Bible's theme for God's people is clearly enunciated in Genesis 12 and 3. And this is what it says, the abbreviated part that I want to talk to you about. This is the first clearly enunciation. And it happened in the dispensation of promise which became the leading into the law, which was the schoolmaster that led us to Christ, who birthed the church. In thee shall all the earth be blessed. 
This was the calling out of Abraham. And he said to Abraham, I'm calling you out. What he was doing. Then he said, and the purpose for my calling you out is that in you, all the earth will be blessed. So the purpose is clearly stated. Now, very quickly, and this is uh, these men could have gone on for hours. I couldn't have matched them, but I could take too easy on this. I'm going to show you that in every dispensation, God re-announced his purpose. Now, a dispensation is a period of time in which God deals with people for a specific time, and it has a beginning and it has an ending. But there's always a bridge because they have failed. Many of the people in a generation would fail, and God would bridge by that righteous remnant into his next great movement to fulfill his purpose in the earth. He dealt with people, and they had to be obedient. And if they failed, they had missed the purpose of God, and God would pick up a remnant and move on to his next acts in the world. Now, I don't want to be left. I don't mind being a part of a remnant, but I don't want to be a leftover. Very quickly, I'm just going to run through this. The first dispensation, Adam and Eve, innocent. God blessed them, and this specifically he told them to do, be fruitful and multiply, and he had given you dominion. He said, I give you the earth. Bless the earth. Second dispensation, conscience, Seth and Enos. They began to be called by the name of God or to call upon the name of God. Noah was at the end of this dispensation with a message of salvation, of saving, of blessing, of helping. Started with Seth and Enos, ended with Noah. Third dispensation, the human government dispensation. This was the time that Noah walked with God. Again, God restates his purpose. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and bless the earth. Now, the fourth dispensation is where we started, Abraham. It was the promise, the dispensation of promise. Now, all of these others led to the dispensation of promise. And promise led to law, and law led to Christ, and Christ led to the church. He took us through that. Now, in this dispensation of promise, clearly he says, the purpose, Abraham, for me choosing you, for me calling you out, for all the revelations, all the promises, the purpose is that you will bless the earth. Simple. The beginning of promise. And we have promises. Acts chapter 2. He says the Spirit's going to be for all flesh. And if the promise is unto you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, it's going to happen. It is a promise of God. It is clearly enunciated. Fourth dispensation. Now, the fifth dispensation came, and it was law. This is all background. I'll get into what you want to hear later. Fifth dispensation was law. The people were called out of Egypt. You know how the law was given. Moses, the whole thing. Now, it is clearly stated that way they were to be. We forget that this is in the Old Testament because we think of it in the New Testament. They were to become a kingdom of priests. Now, the whole nation were to be priests. You know what I heard Winky Pratney say, and I've not forgotten it. He said, you're either a missionary or a mission field. You either need to be doing the job, and if you're not doing the job, you need to be evangelized. And that is true. Every one of you, every one of you are priests. And a priest has a dual responsibility, and it is his primary purpose for being. One is to take the people to God, and the other is to bring God to the people. If you're not doing that, you're failing. You're failing in your job, you're failing in your purpose. That is the uttermost of you being in a kingdom of priests. But now Israel, fifth dispensation, God said, I brought you out. I have given this law. I am making you a kingdom of priests to evangelize the earth. They were placed on a bridge geographically that connected all of the then populated parts of the world. It was a trade route 
to move from one to another. God said, I'm going to set up a tabernacle here, fill this whole nation full of priests. As the people come in and come out, you will evangelize them, and by this you will bless the whole earth. And this is not in my notes, but let me tell you, God has put the top 3% of all intelligence from every nation of the world in the American campuses. It is not by accident they're here in our land, and we are missing it. When these kids get out of our colleges, they'll go back and rule the nations. We are to be a kingdom of priests. Are we doing it? Are we praying over our hangnails instead? Pardon me. They were to be a light to the Gentiles. We're supposed to do the same thing. And I'm just running through it in a hurry. Now, the law extended to Calvary. Then came the Savior. And it is clearly said, and we need to remember this. He did not come into the world to condemn. But he came to save. That's the purpose. We're not here to talk about who's not right and who's going to hell. We are here. That's easy. It's always easy to take a defensive thing. The other is costly, as Sister Mangan just told me. It is very costly because you've got to be on your toes. You've got to be on alert. You've got to be on duty 24 hours a day. A priest is always on call. He's always got to figure out how to get God to the people and the people to God. That's your primary purpose. He did not come to condemn. He came to save. And this begins, he leads us then into the church. Jesus led us into the church. Now, God's purpose is stated over 300 times in the Bible. 300 times. To bless the nations. If you'll notice in your Bible, you can check the book of Revelation. You can check the book of Genesis. The word nations is very prevalent in both places. He started with blessing the nations. He's going to end up dealing with this world according to nations. There is going to be a reaping of nations, a judgment of nations, an evangelization of nations. And that's big thinking. That's big thinking, but it's in the word of God. Israel continually, before I go into the church dispensation, Israel continually lost sight of the purpose of God and became ingrown. Now, there were three things that they were to do. I told you they were to be priests. That means they were to be intercessors constantly. They were to be, you can find this in Exodus 19. They were to be a model community in, in deed and attitude so they would reveal God to the world by their own lifestyle. Third, they were to be witnesses of God and his power of redemption. The problem was they became like the world while outwardly staying separated from the world. Let me show you what happened. They became proud and haughty in their heritage. And I hope this speaks loud to us. They learned to operate with control and manipulation. They were constantly seeking preeminence. They became very judgmental. They became profit-minded. Yeah, that's P-R-O-F-I-T, not P-H-E-T. Profit-minded. Is that worldliness? That is as much worldliness and maybe more so than a lot of things that we talk about on the outward because that's the inward things that lead to the outward thing. And yet they became separated from the world. They would not eat without washing their hands. But they could be proud and haughty and judgmental. They had a problem and they missed the purpose of God. And let me tell you what happened. God found it easier to deal with their outward sin than he did with their diverting of his purpose. He could rebuke them for their outward sins but he never turned them from their diverting of God's purpose in calling them out because they became ingrown. Now, at, at every dispensation, as it ended, just as God started that dispensation with announcing his purpose, he called his people out, put a covenant with them, or whatever he did each dispensation, and he would tell them clearly what you're supposed to do. Then at the end of that dispensation, when it ended, 
there was always a very crucial time. And this is why I have chosen this subject for you today. We are at the end of a dispensation. We are at the end of a dispensation. It was crucial what happened at those particular times. There were people who became bridges into the fulfillment of God's purpose. The crucial times, though, were because they had failed. Now, let me run through it quickly, very quickly. You know the first time they failed, Adam and Eve. It was a crucial time. They had missed God's purpose. But the crucial bridge was Adam at least had faith enough to call his wife the life giver. And he believed that there was going to be something in the future. The second dispensation was when Noah lived. There had been a horrible failure. You know what happened with all of that generation back there. But Noah became a bridge because he had heard and acted on the voice of God. It was a crucial time. It was failure. But a remnant stepped out and said, I will, I will, I will. We're living at a crucial time. The third generation, when the Tower of Babel, they had failed. And their failure was they were building personal kingdoms. They were small thinking because they said, we have to stay close together. We can't scatter. Better watch that spirit. God had told them to bless, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the whole earth, bless the whole world. And there they were trying to huddle up together and build a personal kingdom of how big they could get and how powerful they could become. So you had to move on. And God finds a man by the name of Abraham, calls him out and gives him the promise. And then we go into the fourth dispensation, and there was also a crucial time at that dispensation. Started with Abraham, great Abraham, faith, the father of the faithful, full of faith, following the promises. You know what his next generation did? Isaac was a wonderful son, but he had no expansion mentality. He redug wells. He might have done a little bit beyond, but he was interested in redigging. He was interested in maintaining. And there was no spirit of expansion in Isaac's generation. Jacob came along. It was more trouble. You know what the big trouble was in Jacob's generation? Strife between the brethren. They were not interested in the purpose of God. They were interested in feeding themselves, protecting themselves, and fussing with one another, and jealousy because God had chosen Joseph. And there was a crisis. So what does God do? He picks up a little teenage boy, puts him through the fire, sends him to Egypt, and what a slap to Israel. God's chosen sent into Egypt. Not to bless Israel. You know, we have this mentality, God owes us something. He picked up his chosen man for the next generation and took him away from Israel and sent him to Egypt. And he was going to bless. He's going to bless Israel. That's right. But you know where he blessed first? He blessed Egypt first. Because Israel had lost sight of the purpose of God. And the purpose of God will not be defeated. If he has to go to Egypt, he'll do it. And if Egypt receives him, he's going to bless Egypt. Then Israel was blessed, but he blessed Egypt, and that's hard to take sometimes. You know what it says at that time when he when they looked down and saw Egypt being blessed? They said, it's said of Joseph's boys. Joseph said to them, why are you just standing here looking up on one another? And that says a lot to me. We spend so much of our time just standing around looking up on one another, trying to figure out what's going on. You better join in the blessing and follow a Joseph that's opened up a storehouse somewhere. And then the fourth dispensation, the law, Moses, promised. He was the protector of the law. You know, it's it's strange to me that Israel was either always contained or restrained by what was happen, happening in Egypt. That's the world. Israel either became like the world or withdrew totally from the world. Now, it is so easy for us to get so caught up in protecting God and the law and the word and what we believe that we forget the purpose of God. Israel did that. They were the greatest protectors of God's law the world has ever known. They didn't only protect the law. They built one boundary around it, and then they built another fence and another fence until they got so many fences nobody could get to God. And there was a crisis there. And so the law passed on, and it had to come in, and Jesus came to the earth and blessed everybody. I've already told you he came not to condemn, but he came to save the world. Now, at the crisis end, and I'm trying to skip through what I can cover here, at the time of the law dispensation is when Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, 
the Israelites, the Pharisees in particular, had become so myopic in saving themselves that they lost sight of saving the world. And let me just throw this in for good measure. We are always interested in ministering to each other. You're supposed to grow up and be big enough to take. You know what maturity is? Maturity is for you to be strong enough to take care of yourself and have some left over to take care of somebody else. We have crippled our churches, crippled our pastors, crippled our organization, always trying to minister to each other. We love to bunch up together and bless each other. That is not the ultimate purpose of God. Jesus did not exclude anyone from himself, not even by his attitude. He fulfilled God's purpose. You know, it spoke, he spoke of great faith. It was to the Gentiles. When he fed the multitudes, the 4,000 feeding was to the Gentiles. He fellowshiped with Zacchaeus. He fellowshiped with Magdalene. He fellowshiped with the tax collectors. He, fe- he was always in the wrong place with the wrong people doing the wrong things, according to the Pharisees. And it was the Pharisees who had known so much who became the criticizers of the fulfillment of God's purpose in the law, in, in, in the earth. Now, you better notice that because it is proven by history that the people who have had the most recent revival movement among them become the most critical of God's next movement. I'll just let that sit. As he fulfilled the purpose of God to bless all people, he was constantly questioned by those who did not understand why he didn't stay within the confines of Israel when they had already failed in the purpose of God. You're not going to box him in. He is going to fulfill his purpose. And I'm just going to volunteer again and anew, Lord, count me in. I'm on your side. They lost the purpose. The Pharisees lost the purpose of God in this world today by scrutinizing other people and always scrutinizing traditions. They were offended because the disciples didn't wash their hands. They were offended because Jesus healed on the Sabbath, and that's not the way they had always done it. They were offended because he said somebody's sins were forgiven that had not come through the Mosaic law. They were constantly offended, always upset. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. to. to this is just to, to clinch the deal about the crisis time at the end of the dispensations. Jesus had come as the bridge at the end of the crisis time of that dispensation, when Israel had failed, he bridged into the church. And at that crisis time, he made these statements. Those that drunk first say, the way we used to do it is better. The old wine is better. And he said, therefore, they desire no new wine. Nothing new in God's work, in God's movement. He said, you rejected the commands of God to keep your own traditions And so you made the word of God of none effect. He said, you won't come in and fulfill the purpose, but you'll stand at the door as an obstacle to keep other people from coming in with your judgmental attitude. Now, the purpose of God in the earth today is the same as it was when he stated it so clearly to Abraham. Because Peter picked up the words and said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood that you may show forth all the glory and the might and the majesty of God in this earth. That is his purpose. You are to take God to the people and the people to God. And that is your ultimate goal in life. Now, when when Israel rejected Jesus, it didn't alter God's purpose. It did not alter God's purpose. Now, let me take you into this right now of where we are. We left the law. Jesus bridged into the church dispensation, which is the sixth dispensation. That's where we are. And it is still the same purpose. Bless the earth, all the people of the earth. Acts 15 is so important because the council at Jerusalem, at the early birth of the church, they declared this gospel is not exclusive. So Paul went trotting off to the Gentiles, and Philip went off to the Samaritans, and they took in all kind of people. It had its problems, but they were fulfilling the purpose of God. The dispensations always started with the fulfilling of the purpose of God. But as time moved on, humanity took over, and they thwarted God's purpose, and then comes a sudden crisis when God looks for a remnant that will follow his purpose. 
and say, I'll do it. I'll go. I'll bless everybody. That will become my ultimate purpose. So God's purpose today is still the same, but we are in a crisis time. Can you believe that? Jesus is our Lord. He is also our model. He took time enough with his disciples only to train them for the work of the kingdom. And then he reached out constantly to other people. The Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and teach and preach the gospel to every creature. And lo, I am with you. That is a conditional promise. Only if you're out and blessing others does he promise to be with us to the end time. We are at the end time. We have to move out and beyond. And the, the, the blessing of God to remain with us is conditional if we are fulfilling the purpose of God. Do you know why God is inter- interested in blessing us and in supplying our needs? Can anybody guess? So we can fulfill the purpose of God in this earth. When he puts money in your hands above what you have to have to live, not the way you want to live, above the necessities of your life, the main purpose is that you will use it to bless the kingdom, to spread the gospel. When he gives you an intelligent mind, it is not for you to decide how to decorate that bedroom for the third time. It is for you to figure out means and ways by which you can invite your neighbors into your home and fulfill the command of hospitality and become a missionary in your neighborhood. He blesses you with so many things when he gives us these power tools of the Spirit. It is not for you to discern what's wrong with Sister Susie. It's for you to pick up what's happening with your neighbor's family over there that you can move in the Spirit. When he gives you the word of God, it is not for you to go hunting the scripture to make you feel better. It is for you to understand the awesomeness of all of this that God has done so that you can rush and be equipped to fulfill the purpose of God in the earth today. I wish I had the ability to explode a bomb in this place that would send you in all directions and that you couldn't come back until you had fulfilled the purpose. Do you know what's happened in Russia in one year by one man's vision? And I don't mind telling you, Bob Weiner went in there. He pulled out 20 university students. He taught them. He baptized them in the name of Jesus. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. He put tools in their hand. He said, I'll be back in two months and you bring 20 with you. Two months later, he came back and they brought some more. Between five and seven to nine thousand, they don't even know, have now been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, equipped to disciple, and it is spreading like wildfire. And here we sit, here we sit, going on Wednesday night, going on Sunday night, being offended if the pastor don't preach to please us, being offended if the pastor don't come call on us if we've got a sore toe. Criticizing harvest time if the music's not like what we like to hear. Making our church services where we enjoy bucking and snorting and enjoying it and leave a poor sinner there sitting wondering what in the world does this mean and what is it all about? We are constantly blessing us, blessing us. And the purpose of God in the earth today is get out and bless others. Even to the nations. Go and bless. Take the gospel. We are at the end of an age. We are at the end of a dispensation. It's a crisis time. He's looking for a remnant that's going to bring in the kingdom. Going to spread the gospel, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord all over this world. And I leave you with this challenge. Choose you this day whom you will be, a Pharisee or a priest. The Pharisees protected everything they had and they kept them out by the thousands and millions. But the priests of God are the ones that bring God to the people and take the people to God. And he has a royal priesthood that is going to usher in the kingdom age. And I volunteer, Lord. I volunteer. 
I'll join with the armies of heaven to see that the purpose of God is fulfilled in this earth today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Offer your prayer of commitment to Him. Hallelujah. And this is not a regular school. We have crowded in much, much, much this morning. But I want you to know you needed every bit of it. You needed the gifts of the Spirit, your empowerment. You needed this look into prophecy, warring angels. And we definitely needed practicality that Sister Tinney brought to us today. So I want us, now we don't do this in school, but this ain't regular. We're going to give them a standing ovation.